So I've made it no surprise that I'm a big fan of indie games and I'm a big fan of the Nintendo Switch and when those two things come together, oh boy, I got, I got a lot. You guys have a... Ooh, there's a whole lot of games to choose from there, boy. It's also no surprise that I'm a big fan of platformers. I've talked about a bunch on my channel, and believe it or not, I actually play a bunch not on the channel, and I figure, hey, now's as good a time as any to talk about them. It's very easy to look at a pixelated platformer and think it's just a run-of-the-mill, kind of whatever, NES clone, and then you move on with your day, and that's about it. But believe it or not, there's a whole lot of them that are awesome that not a whole lot of people play, which is very upsetting, and I'm hoping to change that today. We're not going to talk about a lot of the heavy hitters like Shovel Knight, Ooh, what a crazy hidden gem that is. Nah. I have built up quite the list of pixel platformers on the Nintendo Switch, and I'm going to talk about 20 of them today, so let's go. This is one of those instances where the name of a game caught me, and I had to just, I had to give it a shot immediately. Panic Porcupine. It's, you know, you know, you do, you do play as a porcupine. He look, he looks kind of like a hedgehog, but he's not, not quite the hedgehog you would come to expect. So like the game starts off with the land in danger and then, you know, a hedgehog was supposed to show up, but he had a movie deal at the time. So we're going to just, we're going to deal with this guy instead. <laughs> instead and look at him. He's terrified. So while it may sound like this would be like a Sonic the Hedgehog clone, that's not really the case. Panic Porcupine is more like this weird combination of Sonic the Hedgehog with Super Meat Boy in that you're going to die a lot and you can quick restart and give it another go. The levels are longer though, and there's a lot of momentum based stuff like Sonic. You have to go around and collect a bunch of eggs, collect a bunch of little woodland creatures, and uh, just hope that you do okay. Just, just hope you don't die too many times and get too frustrated because, listen, because it's like Meat Boy, it's, it's gonna happen a lot. The music is upbeat and catchy. The mechanics are actually pretty solid. Again, not much like Sonic the Hedgehog, but just enough momentum-based gameplay so you can get your, uh, you can get a good feel for what's going on. And yeah, it's just a really solid time. A really well-built platformer from start to finish with a lot of challenge. Like it starts off really simplistic, but the further in you go, oh my God, I was, I was pulling my hair out with some of the final challenges. This game gets ruthless and that is exactly what I wanted. It's a funny premise that could have easily failed, but it didn't. It sticks the landing. It was really, really fun. Highly recommend it. Panic Porcupine. As it turns out, Panic Porcupine is not the developer's first game. Here we have Poly Roll. Aesthetically, it is kind of similar to Panic Porcupine, but structurally, it's not. It's a lot slower. It's a lot more proper platforming based. You're, you're gonna die, but not, not as much. It's not that Super Meat Boy like. It's just more of a solid platformer where you play as a little roly poly, trying to find your roly poly friends. This is just fun. And I love the color palettes too. Everything in this game just pops. It's just it's just a very pleasant game to play through. Having a game that was similar to Panic Porcupine, but I wasn't gonna hate my life, was something that was really reassuring. There's not a whole lot of frills to this one. What you see is what you get. But, you know, in a lot of instances, that's totally fine. Poly Roll was really fun, and I'm excited to see more of what this developer makes in the future. This is another one that came as a really pleasant surprise, Planet Cube Edge. I thought for the longest time this was like some kind of shovelware, but then I actually sat down and watched the gameplay footage and I'm like, oh, this looks really fun. And then I went ahead and I got the game as a review code and yeah, sure enough, it is really fun. It's a fairly standard run and jump and shoot type of game, but you play as a box and everything is kind of kind of green, almost Game Boy-ish. Of course, they're going for that aesthetic and it works. I think the thing that really stands out for this game is it just plays really well. Jumping around and shooting, it all feels great. It's a very linear affair where you're going from screen to screen, dodging a whole bunch of challenges. You got things shooting at you. You got spikes you got to avoid. You got like a bunch of enemies. You know, it, it, it's stuff that you would expect. And thankfully, it does that thing where if you die, you go right back to where you just were. You don't got to replay a ton of gameplay. That's perfect. The challenge of this game really kept me coming back for more. It was a nice, pleasant challenge that I never felt like I was dealing with too many, you know, a beginner traps and just things that were way too difficult to take down. It just felt great. If you're looking for another game that's kind of like Meat Boy, but this time mixed with Mega Man, then I think Planet Cube Edge is for you. Oh man, Elekhead. Now this is one of those games that has one core idea, is stretched out throughout the entire adventure with a fantastic aesthetic that really leaves an impression on you because man, man, this game is fantastic. As this cute little guy, you have the ability to toss your head and your head can conduct electricity. When it's on you, your whole body has electricity. When you toss it, only the head. And that idea is enough to carry an entire game where whenever you're on something or you throw your head onto something, it will activate platforms and walls and just a ton of different things. There are a bunch of different challenges in this roughly 45 minute to hour long adventure that all come down to timing when you have to jump and throw your head. It's all just so gratifying to figure out. There are a few really hidden secrets that are satisfying to find. The ending is really interesting and ambiguous. I really love this game and uh, we need more head based platformers. That's all I'm saying. Dynamite Heady, 
uh, decap attack. Uh, this we, we, we need we need more. We need more. Salary man she. Now this is uh this is an instance of something that is very clearly like very very clearly trying to be based off of something else. This time Super Mario World, and that is totally okay because instead of playing as a you know chubby Italian plumber, you are a uh, I'm assuming tired briefcase wielding uh, Japanese businessman, and your goal is you have to catch the bus to go to work. I I love that it's just another really boring profession. And thankfully, uh, you just got to platform your way to the end, and it's 16-bit goodness, uh, and the briefcase it just kind of acts like Cappy from Mario Odyssey. That's, <laughs> this is a combination that I just, it just, it's so surreal, uh, and I love that it's not super exciting, but th they managed to embrace that, and we just have a really fun 16-bit platformer. Uh, look, at the, look at these little bird guys, they, they just look like Goombas. I, I love it. It's not even trying, but I am totally okay with that. Oh man, and don't even get me started on the giant electrical frog jump scare. Oh, oh my goodness, this is terrifying. I just wanna, I just wanna do my taxes. Oh, Bat Boy. This game was so damn cool. This, I, I would think the easiest way to compare this is it seems more like a Shovel Knight-like. Now, I know Shovel Knight was based off a lot of different properties, and this is kind of like that too. It's just that structure, you look at the world map, you look at it instead of it being knights, like how Shovel Knight was, and you just have a bunch of athletes, uh, then yeah, th there are a lot of comparisons that can definitely be made there. You play as this high school kid who's a baseball athlete, all of your friends get taken away by a mysterious evil, and you platform throughout all of these wondrous lands and take out a bunch of pigs? <laughs> sure, the pigs are kind of cute and I like killing them, and that's how you save the day. And you got a little bird companion who won't shut up. As you beat the levels, you're consistently learning new mechanics. Every single time, there's just something new, like, oh wow, I can do this now, and I can do this now, and I can throw my bat out, and now I can bounce off of things this way. You're constantly growing as the game goes on, and there are some challenge levels that do really test your skills. If there were any major downsides with this game, it would come down to the music. I don't think it's all that memorable. It's kind of atmospheric, more than something you would expect from a game like this, but it's fine. Otherwise, though, this is just a very sound, modern 8-bit platformer with a ton of really cool mechanics that goes on for a couple hours, has a very steady challenge curve and a satisfying ending. That's all I really want from a game like this, and this game delivers on all fronts. Really a big fan of Bat Boy. This is one of those instances of love at first sight. When I first saw this trailer, I knew it was going to be special, and then I played it, and sure enough, this game is fantastic. I would go as far as to say this is the best Mega Man-like ever made. It's almost like this crazy combination of a bunch of different Mega Man types. It's structured like classic Mega Man. You have eight different levels to choose from right from the very beginning. It has the atmosphere of a Mega Man X game where the threat is way larger than you would expect it to be. And even though the graphics are kind of cutesy, there is definitely an edge to everything. It plays a lot like Mega Man Zero because there is a strong emphasis on close combat and oh my God, it feels incredible. And this one may be a bit of a stretch, but even kind of like Mega Man Battle Network because you have customizable chips that you can purchase back at the home base. And every time you finish a level, there are more chips for you to mess with, and man, it's just so, so much fun to see what works, because when you find out the loadout that works, you feel unstoppable until you get to the boss fights, and then you get stopped, but it feels like such a damn good challenge because the combat feels so good, and the music is fantastic. Dude, I can't, I can't even really like put into words in a short amount of time just how much I love this game. Oh, dude, there's a grappling hook. I almost forgot. There's also a grappling hook. It's not very often when a game like this feels like the perfect package where it nails every single thing it's trying to do and then some, but Gravity Circuit, yeah. This game definitely succeeded at that. I recommend every game in this list for sure, but you would be foolish if you're an action fan to miss out on this one. So we're gonna change things up a little bit and go retro because even though this is an old game, it is still a very special release. Clockwork Aquario. The story behind this game is that it was developed by Westone, a company that developed a lot of Wonder Boy games back in the day, and this game right here was developed for the arcades back then, but it was canceled. And for years, while it was thought to be lost, it is lost no more. The game is readily available, and it is a lot of fun. It is a classic arcade style game, so you gotta expect a lot of quick challenges, you're gonna be dying a whole lot and starting up a whole bunch of new continues. It is very arcadey, but I mean, just look at it. The style is incredible, and it's easily comparable with some of the other games that we've talked about today. You got Right, punchy graphics, you have a mechanic where you can lift enemies over your head and throw them at everything else. It's a simple idea, try and get as many points as you can, maybe try and do a no death run. This is classic arcadey goodness and it is so awesome that this game has been preserved for easy access. But if you're cool with that and you're cool with the idea of trying the game over and over again to just better your runs, then this game, definitely recommend it. We're sticking retro here, but this is another game that I'm going to assume a lot of you guys haven't played, and damn it, you really should. Gimmick, 
Special Edition. So this is a classic NES game that only released in Japan and Scandinavia back in the day, which is a very odd combo. But once word was starting to get out about this game during the retro boom a few years back, I really noticed that this game is incredible and a hidden gem that we really missed out on, and it is so, so damn cool that it's available now. Essentially, this is an NES platformer you play as a tiny little green guy, and it has physics, which for an NES game, is mind-boggling. Like, you have the ability to summon stars over your head and chuck them, and then depending on how fast you're moving when you throw it, if you bounce the star off of certain slants, like, it'll bounce with proper physics, which, sure, for modern games, kind of whatever, of course it does, but for an NES game, that's insane! The game was developed by Sunsoft, and if you know anything about them, how they developed NES games back in the day, there were no slouches when it came to graphics and music, because holy cow, this game looks fantastic, and it sounds incredible. Like, there's this bit in the first level where you walk through this water tube just to watch fish going around you, and it's the only part of the game that's like this, and it's just meant for the, the graphic designers to show off. I love that. Yeah, and the soundtrack's incredible too, like, it, it feels great, it sounds great, it's very challenging, and thankfully the Special Edition does have a rewind feature, always love that for classic games. And I just don't want this game to go back into the archives of being some crazy hidden gem. Gimmick deserves to be played, it is awesome, awesome, awesome. And I'm kind of cheating on this one because it's not released yet, I thought it would, but uh, it's not. The same developers at Sunsoft also made a game called Trip World for the Game Boy, which is fantastic, and that's also coming to Switch. I just thought it would be out now, because uh, what's incredible about it is it's not only a Game Boy game, it's getting colorized for the first time ever, thanks to Limited Run. That is awesome. Maybe I'll talk about this again once that game releases, but man, it's so good. It, it's pretty short, but it's a magical adventure from start to finish. Gimmick and Trip World. So good. Sunsoft back in the day, they were killing it. Pom Pom, The Great Space Rescue. There are so many games out there that mimic the 8-bit and 16-bit styles of the NES and Super Nintendo, but very rarely does a game come out that tries to be Super Nintendo styled. But rather than have it being a game based off of using a controller, it's like a modern interpretation of a Super Nintendo game that uses the mouse, like the Mario Paint mouse. I was sold immediately. This little mouse dude is always moving and you have the ability with a whole bunch of items as well as a cursor to place things down to make sure that he survives on his adventures. And that's it. I mean, that's like the entire premise of the whole game, but they had so many different items that you can use. The art style is incredible. It has really charming music. It is hard as hell. Oh my God. Maybe I'm just not that good at it. That is totally fair. But I just admired the ambition of a game developer trying to make a new Super Nintendo mouse game. That's awesome. If you play the game on PC, of course you have an actual mouse that you can use and it feels super accurate, but on Switch you can use cursors or gyro and it still feels really good, just there may be a little extra challenge there. Whether you play it on Steam or on Switch, you're in for a really good time with this one. I cannot believe the Super Nintendo mouse was a thing and they barely made that many games for it. This remedies that. Love this game. Ah, Beanie. Who couldn't love a, a name like Beanie for a big old ball of bee? So this is a cute little game by the developers of the Tori games, which are pretty infamous in the eShop for being these really fun, cheap 3D platformers. It was a really big surprise to see a developer who did a really good job with classic low poly style 3D platforming make a game that's based off of a 16-bit platform right now. Like very clearly it's trying to be Donkey Kong Country with its aesthetics, and clearly that's not a bad thing because this game is really nice looking. This is another one of those really bite-sized adventures, like honestly, less than a half hour. But what's really admirable about this is that it's purely a vertical platformer. You don't see those very often. Everyone goes crazy over the horizontal axis, and hey, you know what, fine enough. The, you know, the horizontal axis is the better of the two. I'll respect it. But the horizontal axis, it has a nice personality. Like, what you see here is what you get, just keep going to the top and getting to your beehive and eventually you'll you'll beat the game in no time. It is worth completing though because this game also kind of acts like a segue into the next game that this developer made, Super Kiwi 64, and it does so in a way that kind of blew my mind honestly, which I did not expect from a, a little cheap game like this. I've said this before, but Siactro, this developer, they're not making anything gigantic, but even still, they're a developer worth keeping your eyes on. You got a big old supporter of Beanie in me. All right, we can keep this one short and sweet. Donut Dodo. This is a modern take on a classic Donkey Kong styled arcade game. You have a bunch of single screen levels. There's a giant Dodo that keeps trying to kill you and you have to collect a bunch of donuts. Uh, and then you can get the big donut. You got to avoid crazy enemies like the mouse and, 
and and the toilet and that that's just a pac-man ghost the music is intense and blood pumping and there's also this really awesome mechanic where if you get one of the donuts you'll see another one on the screen start to glow to maximize your points rather than just going for every donut that you see keep going for the glowing one if you go out of your way to get a glowing one another one will start to glow randomly and just keep doing that you can accrue some more lives that way and after a few playthroughs then you know the levels by heart and it's just a really fun and wacky arcade game i i love this so much there's not much more to it like a single playthrough you're meant to go through the same game loop of like four levels twice it takes 15 minutes if you can survive but yeah this game does exactly what it needed to and it filled a void that i didn't know i had much love to the dodo he's just trying to I, I don't know, protect his giant donut. I, who cares, man? Just get the big donut. You're, you're a chef. You need the donut by any means necessary. That dodo will be just fine. Nothing bad ever happened to dodos. On a similar note, here we have Annalyn. This is basically what happens when you take an arcade Pac-Man style game, but make it a platformer, which as someone who has always loved both of those things, yes, this game turned out to be fantastic. Dude, it's just like, instead of four ghosts, it's four snakes, you play as this adorable little girl, or exclusively in the Switch version as Anton from Anton Blast fame, that's awesome. And the level ends when you collect all the coins, you can get this big red gem, and then all the, all the snakes go blue and they get scared. It's just Pac-Man, it's just a Pac-Man platformer. That's all it's, it's it, that's all it is and I don't care. It's awesome I can't not mention the music too because it is incredible There are a few tracks specifically like the boss track and I think it's the lava factory is what it's called that are just Stellar it's a longer game than donut dodo It definitely will take about twice as long But then you get this random mode later on where the level order is in fact random But there's also this minecart bonus segment that pops up. That's only exclusive to this mode There's a bunch of achievements that reward you with different palettes for your characters. It's just man I keep coming back to this game if I don't know what else I want to play I will just do a run of Annalyn and I'll have a great time if this begins a trend of having brand new games that are just based off of classic Namco arcade games I am all for that because that sounds incredible the more the merrier. This one's also kind of cheating because I'm talking about three games in one. Love, Kuso, and Love 3. All three of these games are basically identical, and on top of that, Love 3 includes all of the levels from Love and Kuso, so you may as well just go with that one. But this is just one crazy, seamless platforming gauntlet, with the main gimmick being you have a set number of lives and the ability to set your checkpoints whenever you want. Since these games are incredibly challenging, you can't expect them to be on the shorter side. They only go on for about like a half hour to an hour or so. But I love the simplistic aesthetic, and I think the gameplay mechanics are just perfect enough that they make a game like this that is just super challenging, I guess, but also kind of like Meat Boy because you're gonna die a whole lot. It makes it just a really fun, complete package. I'm pretty sure at the time of this video, you can still purchase Love and Kuso individually, but realistically, just pick up Love 3. It includes all of those levels, makes it a much beefier game. If you want a game that's just meant to test your skills and put yourself to the challenge, and then hey, you never know, maybe you can go for a deathless run in this game too, then Love 3 comes highly recommended. The way I was pitched Wonderling is exactly how I'm going to pitch it to you. Imagine a game that takes place in the world of a Mario-styled game where there's a hero meant to save the day, but instead of playing as the hero, you play as the Goomba, and it's a level-based auto-runner. I know auto-runners tend to have a big stigma with a lot of people, but trust me, this is one of the good ones. In this game, you can only do one thing, and that's jump. Your little guy is just going to keep moving until he hits a wall, and then he's going to turn around, and then he's just, he's just going to keep going. There's a lot of shiny things to collect. There's often a lot of gimmicks, like these wings that'll let you fly a little bit. There are hidden treasure chests that really test your skills. You can customize your guy to the fullest extent, and I love this, I don't know, I really like it where you can just get little items that just make your guy look a little different. Even that, even as stupid as some of these things are, I, I I think it's an awesome little unlockable. But yeah, this is a game that I just did not expect to like. I'm not that huge into auto runners, but thankfully, since this isn't one of those endless runners, and the levels are really well designed, yeah, I really enjoyed my time with this. It helps that there is also a lot of content. There are many worlds with many levels, and then they made DLC with even more levels. Like, you get a really good bang for your buck with this one. There's also a handful of cutscenes with this witch character and, like, a cow who's filming the whole thing, and... <laughs> it's, uh, I don't want to spoil some of the dialogue, but, uh, it's... It's worth it to go through all the cutscenes. It's it's kind of hilarious. Another one of those games where you're gonna die a lot, but you're gonna keep saying, one more try, one more try. And hopefully if you're not tired of that idea, I gotta tell you, this is another one that you definitely need to play. Ah, uh, Moon Leap. You know, you wanna talk about a game that really went under the radar. This is one of them. I cannot believe that nobody was talking about this because this is really fun. 
You play as the Sun of the Moon, and you're on a journey to save a whole bunch of shooting stars that fell to Earth. And thankfully, you do so with a whole bunch of puzzle platforming stages. The main mechanic is as you jump, things in the world will change. Everything has two different states. If you jump, spikes will appear. If you jump again, the spikes will disappear. Figuring out not only when to time your jumps, but where to time your jumps to do some actual platforming was a really fun challenge that I had to spend a lot of time thinking about for some of the later levels. I can't speak for everybody out there, but if you look at the rest of this video, I talked about a lot of platformers that were more on the action-y side of things. It was really refreshing to find this platformer that has a really cool aesthetic that was slower paced and it really tested my mental capacity. If you just book it from start to finish and you're a real smart guy, it's not going to take you all too long, but I can tell you, if you're not all that bright, like, like this guy, like the guy pointing at himself behind the microphone, then yeah, it's going to take you a decent bit, but a couple hours and then you're done. It does a good job satisfying that puzzle platformer itch. Plus the entire moon theme and like the sound effects and, and some of the enemy designs and everything just has this odd eerie vibe that I adore. Like everything about this game I think is fantastic. And get it, moon leap, it's cause you're a moon that does a lot of leaping. I figured that part made sense, I just, I just wanted to say it before we moved on. One of the things I discovered in all of my researching for the Nintendo Switch eShop is there's this series of games called the Pixel Game Maker series that's exclusive, console-wise at least, to the Nintendo Switch. And there's like a bunch of them, and I can't speak for all of them because there's a lot to go for, but this one here really stuck out to me. Oma 2 Ari Adventure. It's quite the title, uh, but essentially it's just a very basic Mario 1 styled platformer with the speedrunner layout. Uh, that. I'm, I'm surprised I haven't seen more games just straight up copy the speedrunner layout because it actually fits really well for this style of game. I mean, listen, you're not getting anything crazy with this one. It is very much a Mario 1 styled game, but you have a double jump. Uh, you have a mushroom-like ability that turns you into a giant raccoon. Uh, there's, there's some water levels. Uh, you, got, you got Goomba and, and Koopa little guys. You, it, it's not, this is nothing mind blowing, but something about just having the screen layout made me really want to play it, and I'm glad I did. It's a pretty short game, it's not even all that challenging, but seeing the timer at all times, I gotta tell you, that really made me want to go back and just try and better myself because it's just, it's just right there, staring at me at all times. And I mean, that Oma 2 RE title, that, that's pretty on the nose. Like, I, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. There's nothing in the game that refers to what that's supposed to be, but. Uh, it's, it's it's fun. It's a fun game. I wanted to mention this game too because it's part of the same Pixel Game Maker series and like, when else am I going to talk about it? Cham the Cat. Uh, this this is just like, it, it's just like Super Mario Land for the Game Boy, but you have a whip. That's it. Like, this is one of the things I really like about the eShop, and I've talked about this before, but I love these really cheap experiences that are not meant to be mind-blowing, they're just fun little games. Like, sometimes that's all I want. I, I I don't want to spend $20 to $30 on every big game on the eShop. Sometimes I got a couple of bucks and I'm like, hey, this game has a cute art style, I'll play it. And then I play it, I'm like, that that was a game. That was indeed a video game that I just played. And I think, I think Cham the Cat Adventure uh, fits that mold perfectly. I gotta do some more digging into the Pixel Game Maker series to see if anything else is worth a damn, but so far, uh, two games, not bad. Not bad at all. Why yes, I did in fact want a classic style platformer where you play as a big muscly timber man or also just a big old bear and you, you gotta save your your big old bear wife from the evil people. Uh, yeah, you know, I, finally. I'm pretty sure this is one of those games that came from mobile phones. But even with that typical stigma, this was just a really solid platformer. Like the aesthetics, the sprite work, the music, it's all its all pretty good. It's not anything that's gonna blow you away, it's just a really solid time. You got a bunch of letters that you gotta collect, like Donkey Kong Country style, they spell out the word timber, that's kinda cute. Every so often you run into these arcade machines that have a mini game of like, what is essentially the previous Timberman game. It was all about just going left and right and just seeing how much of this endless tree you can chop down. Like that's just a mini game in this one. Uh, you can buy that original one if you want, but it's kind it's kind of just in here now. I especially think it's cute and charming how the checkpoints are like these these Wi-Fi little little signs and you take a selfie and that's the checkpoint. <laughs> oh, this this is a, this is one this is one of the games, man. This is one of the games. Like listen, all right, maybe it's just because I have a huge platformer bias, but I just like platformers, man. 
And I, I think all of these games are good. You got some games that I talked about, like Elekhead and Gravity Circuit, that I think are just phenomenal and definitely go on the highest of highs when it comes to recommendations. But I just like picking up any of these platformers I can and seeing how every single person does things a little bit differently. I'm not looking for every game to blow me away. A lot of times I just want to say, hey, this platformer is a little bit different. Let's give it a shot. And I hope with this video, with this list of games that I carved out, you discover a few new favorites. And the thing that's crazy is I actually have a whole lot more pixel platformers that I want to talk about. About. So if you like this and want to see more, let me know. I can easily crank out another couple of these because, oh my god, Nintendo Switch has games. Thanks for watching. Uh, go and save the big bear wife. Uh, go and check out Trip World when that eventually comes out because that will be a really fun time. Uh, buy Gravity Circuit, absolutely. And uh, solve Panic Porcupine's uh, panic attacks. I mean, I think that's a pretty good motivation right there.